Hey people, what's going on? I'm Lee Broken Puppet, back with another video for today. This one's going to be on paper. So we're going to use good old markers. I'm going to be using just normal pencils, I'm going to be using a Sharpie, and some Windsor Newton brush markers. You can use stuff like Copics, Pro Markers, pretty much any kind of pen you want really, or water paints. Um, let's just show you what I do on the iPad, you can do on here as well. So we're going to do a nice classic old school target head today. So a really nice fun one, really interesting one to draw. Let's start off with circle. Once you've got the circle done, we're going to bring this across like this. It's going to curve down into like this oval shape. It's going to be roughly around here. I'm going to bring this little curved line just underneath here, like so. And I'm bringing that level line just down here, just coming back a slight angle, so you're almost kind of sort of straight, just a bit of an angle, but keeping that same direction here and here. Once you've got this, I'm going to bring a little oval shape just at the bottom here. Going to curve over to that circle. Well, we've got this big oval shape here. This is basically where the, like, the nose is going to be. So I'm going to do a little curve line just coming up here. From halfway through that line, just going to curve up. You know, your nose is going to be roughly around here. So you get a little sort of triangle shape in this space. Coming back from here, where this ends here, we're going to have a circle. This is going to be where the eye goes. And I'll do a curve line just coming around the top of it, coming back. And one just underneath it for now, just to kind of sort of tell the shape of it. Coming off the top of that, I'm going to create this curve. It's going to curve roughly back in towards that circle shape we done like that. And I've once underneath, just curving like this. You can do a third one if you want, just there. Nothing too crazy. I'm going to bring this line coming off of this. I'm going to curve back. Loop this inwards. Create a little loop just underneath like so. This curve's going to curve around. It's going to come down and it's going to connect to that chin. Just down there. So you can already see the target face sort of starting to sort of take shape, the general direction and everything of it. So if you follow back from this head, kind of cut it through that ear, you kind of get to where your neck is. So you're going to bring this neck around, and I kind of like sort of come from the sort of teeth shape just here. Curve this line down, and I kind of use that as my reference for getting that bottom part of the neck. You know, I just find it's a good way of getting like a nice evenness to it. Where we've got this face up here, I'm going to come in, let's start with a bit more detail now. So from this nose, I'm going to curve up. A little loop, curve around just like so. Just here, I'm going to curve up, create a little loop again, just curve around just like that. Where this line comes down, I'm going to split this in two, so I'm going to create this curve here. Just going to tell the outside part of this, and this one's going to sort of tell the inside part, so I'm going to curve this back like so. And this is going to curve in one, two. Bring this little line just back like this. Now it kind of connects up to that. It's very similar to the uh, panther heads we do. You know, it's the same kind of concept. Coming here, I'm going to get this sort of like triangle shape for the tooth. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Create a curve down, curve back up like so. I'm going to create this curve loop here. Just create a little loop. Just kind of sort of got a bit of like a lip underneath. Curve up. One, two, three, four. Curve up and down. And just off here, I'm going to create these little flick lines. I'm going to curve around that sort of chin. Just come like a little bit of a beard. Curve back here. And a bit similar on the back, but I'm just going to get this little curve effect. Just come around here. Until we get to around here, and I'm just going to bring this in a little bit more. So once we've got this done, the general rough shape of the face is kind of like getting there now. So I'm going to create this curve from the mouth. I like to make my mouth a little bit kind of wavy. Like so. I'm just going to bring a little curve just here. I'm going to create another little tooth maybe just there if I want. So I'm just classic kind of curve. I'm going to curve around like this. Come back up into the mouth like so. And that's pretty much most of the fog face done. Once you've got this done, it's just little details like in the eye. So get a little pupil. I mean, you can do sort of um, the cat side if you want. I tend to view like the pupil up further. I'm going to go around this eye like this. Like that there. I'm going to create a secondary line. It's going to follow around that eye. Until that little eyebrow bit kind of curves over the top of it. So we bring that a little bit shorter in there. And create one, two, three, four circles in there. One, two, three there. One, two, just there. So it's all kind of getting there. It's all getting the right sort of shape now. And once you've got this done, I'm going to create this kind of uh, stripes. So I'm going to sort of bring the first one. It's going to come here. Now my second one, 
I like to create this little kind of sort of white patch underneath the eye. So I'm going to create this little loop just there. And that's going to connect up to the eye. And off the back here, I'm going to have this curve around towards that way. Like that. Two little stripes in the ears. And one last one, one bigger one in this back area, just there. And if you have space for it, a nice one just coming down on that neck. So you see, that's the basic sort of principle of like the tiger face. So nice and clearly. And now we've got that, I'm just gonna get my good old Sharpie pen. Good old trusty Sharpie pen. You know, it's got some nice kind of paper here, you know, this is basically like a sort of sketchbook, so it's a bit thicker than like the average kind of like, a, you know, A4 bit of paper. You know, you don't want basic kind of print paper, you basically want like a nice good quality paper. Use that watercolour paper or something like that if you want. You know, this is just basic ordinary sketchbook paper. So now we've got that, I'm going to go over with the marker. So I'm just going to use Sharpie for this. I like Sharpie, it always gives like a nice kind of even thickness. Now you can use um, paintbrushes, anything you want, you know, it's pretty much down to you and what you have at hand really. You know, I'm a firm believer there's like no really like wrong material for it, it's just kind of what you have to hands. I mean, you're creating art at this stage, you know, just having fun with it, so it doesn't really make much difference. Obviously then there's a tattoo, you know, it's a big difference there because obviously it's still on the skin and stuff, but when it's just on paper like this, it doesn't really make much difference in my opinion. Keep these lines coming in there, nice and smooth. One tooth, three tooth, four tooth, just that. Little line just kind of finish off that bit of gum. Four circles, just start getting smaller there. Three there, two there. Just two there, two there. I probably will put some whiskers in there at some point, but we'll come around to those. So we've got the secondary line now, just come around this lip. Connect on that. One, two, three, four teeth. Create that other tooth just at the end there. And now we go on to the inside the mouth. So a little side gum bit just there. A little hint of the inside part of the mouth just curving up here. Curve line. And then you come down to the chin. So on the chin, I'm just going to create this little flick line. So just getting that little flick motion, just repeating until we get to there. Let's keep this going around here. Now once you get the motion, just keep going with the motion. Now it takes a little bit of practice, but after a while you kind of get the hang of it. You know, and you get like a nice kind of evenness to it. Looks in the ear, I think, just there. Got that secondary loop for the inside part of the ear, just curving there. And around on the outside, just like so. so. You see, it's all showing up quite nice. We've got everything kind of where we roughly want it. So, once we've got this stage, we're going to put the uh, stripes in there. these in solid black so I'm just going to use a sharpie pen and just go solid black on those just keep this going I like to make my stripes a bit wavy rather than just being like they're perfect smooth you know give them a bit of character a bit of shape to them 
Now there's no real wrong way to do them, get as many or as small as you want. You can make kind of crazy angles, you can kind of create little loops in them. You know, especially with old school, you know, there's really no kind of rule to the tiger stripes. Just kind of make them how you like. You know, just play around with you know, you probably do a few you don't like in that, but as you sort of do a few of these, you start to realise certain ways you do like them and certain ways you don't. And you can kind of sort of just stick with the ones you do like and cut the ones you don't like. You know, you just do, you do that like one sort of motion, you find that one stripe, you're like, oh yeah, I like how that kind of curves, you know, another one, oh, you don't like how that curves. You just keep playing around with it, really. That's all it is, just kind of playing around, having fun with it. Once I'm going to add some whiskers, I think, so I'm going to go one, two, three, two, three, and the fourth one just there. Now, like how it looks, it's got a nice kind of flow to it. So I'm just going to come now and just rub out the pencil work. Now, depending on what paper, you might want to give your pen a chance to dry. And the last thing you want to do is rub out and cause your work to smudge all over the place. You know, it will just kind of ruin your design that way, you don't want that. So you've got that nice and even there. So like I said, I'm gonna use a Windsor Newton brush markers to colour these in. You know, kind of look like this. Windsor Newton brush markers. And you know, I've got to sit here, you get quite a nice set, like 48 of them. Uh, they're not over expensive, you know, they're quite sort of fairly cheap. Um, just always bonus. Come in, I'm going to use my grey tones first. So I'm going to use the CG1 to CG4. And I'm going to use my purple black as well. So I'm going to work down my colours, going from like the darkest to the light. I'm going to go from there pretty much. So once it's done, it's going to occur in a few sort of areas, but the uh, corners that I know I want black, I'm going to work it off. I tend to use this very much like I'd use water paints. So I'll do black first. Get my dark grey. Just work over that edge. Just blend it in out. And just go lighter and lighter. Like so. Just a nice even way of sort of getting a nice nice kind of sort of shape and shade to it. So just to show you it nice and clearly, so I'm gonna use it on the tongue. So I'm gonna put it there and just a hint of it just there. Just a hint just there. Come in now my darker grey. Work over that edge. that edge and just keep working down your greys until you kind of get it nice and blended remember to let it dry as well because as it dries it goes a bit lighter so if you get to the edge of like the lightest grey and you're still noticing it you know, just give it a chance to dry because it will go lighter you know if you keep kind of trying to work it out you're going to go too much of it and probably just destroy the image. So yeah, don't overwork it. Black out that bit on the inside. And then a little bit of black stuff inside the mouth. And some of the slip I'm gonna have black here. 
black here. Bit of black just there. Again, just keep working those in there, just going over it until it blends. I'm going to come down to my light one. I just want to get like a nice little kind of fade out and get this white highlight just in the middle, just kind of give it effect of shine. Just like so. So you've got that shine just down that part of the lip. Nose. Again, sort of triangle shape just across that top part of it. I'm going very close on the edge. I want a very quick transition with this, so stick very much just to that edge. You want to make it a little bit darker as you sort of know you want to shade it like um just in this part here so i'm gonna put a bit of gray just there don't it black i'm basically using this as a way of um turning the color a touch bit darker as well so i'm going to be going over this bit with color just going around that edge i'm going to come in with a light one Do this for a couple of little areas, nothing too crazy. Just a little bit just here on his chin. A little bit just inside this part of the nose. Some of these like sections just here on the side. And yeah, just gonna repeat the motion there, just going from like you know the sort of dark grey to the light grey to the lightest. Little bit, you kind of feel like I need it. Just looking at that thing, I want to get like a nice kind of sort of shadow, just come down the back part of this top part of this head. Yeah, just a little bit of black just underneath a bit of grey underneath the eye. Then I think that'd do it for the um, black and grey. You've got to remember the difference as well when you're colouring, uh, putting a shading of something that's not going to be a black and grey finish compared to something that is. It's always important to remember, you know, um, your colour is going to play a big factor in quite a few of the things you put in there. So certain shadows you're going to achieve with the colour, and if you put too much black and grey, you're going to dull those colours out, and you're not going to get the same effect. So it's going to come here, I'm going to use, um, I've got Fire Brick. Uh, this one's a bright orange. And I'm going to go down to this one, which is um, an amber colour. So again, I'm going to take these off. I'm going to start off with the darkest first. I'm just going to work our way through and we just go down to the uh, lighter tones. So 
like I've done, I'm just putting any darker bits over the darker areas. Like this to begin with. Grab that bright orange. Just work over those edges. Now that's a good thing with it is where the brush chips, they sort of blend together very well. You know, you just want to make sure you get some decent paper because you want to sort of put a few layers in that and if you haven't got very good paper, it's going to sort of tend to mess your paper up quite a bit and that's not what you want. So I've got a bit of orange just in there. I'm going to get a bit coming down the back of the head. Put it work from the top and down. Get that orange, work over the edge. And the way down. Just gonna get a little bit here behind his mouth. Leave that little section there, I want to spit. Yeah, that accent touch, touch, touch. That was a really annoying amateur mistake. <laughs> No worries though. I'm going to come up behind the stripe as well and just put a bit of dark tone on the back of each stripe. Like so. Come on the orange. Just work it into that lovely colour we just put in there. Keep working it in there just like this. Once you've got that done, and then to the yellow. And that down into it. colors to get to it. Flick this out so you get this nice kind of flick from the yellow. Let's grab that lightest gray tone. around that edge and give it a second to dry and you'll see how it does it just kind of blends out tip of the yellow just a little bit so it doesn't kind of sort of like mesh up the picture too much once I've got this done I'm going to grab me a nice red this one's going to be red nice and solid and bold some red behind the eye inside the mouth Inside the tongue. I might leave just a tiny little highlight just around the mouth. But you can either leave white or kind of put like a pinkish tone on there. It's one of those ones where it looks kind of good both ways. I do have one to get like a nice little bit of pink just in that nose, just on the edge. This same thing here, just in the back part of this ear. Bold that in pink. Just grab that really light grey we've done. Put a little bit of yellow just there. Let's get that sort of dark brown colour we used. Inside part of the mouth, 
just there. Come back to me yellow. This around the arm, you could do that purple as well. Some yellow just around that pupil bit, just like that. So a little circle around the pupil, a little bit around the outside the eye. back on. Uh, the teeth are up to you. You can always do the teeth a certain colour if you want. Um, I prefer not to. I like to leave those blank. You know, if I'm doing a creature where it's a bit more darker, sometimes I will. Um, but the tiger's not very dark, so I won't. I might just put a little bit. Just kind of purple tone. It's a very, very faint purple. Kind of lilac-y. I love this colour. It just kind of adds a little bit of colour to the grey. In certain areas. Just like that. And I might just put a little flick of it just on the teeth, just on the inside, just a little tiny stripe. Like so. And there you have people, that's how you draw a tiger head. I hope you like it. Make sure to check out my videos. I've got ones on sort of Procreate. I've got ones on drawing as well. Um, let me know which ones you prefer. You know, whichever one you prefer, I'll sort of try and do more of. You know, but for you people, I'm the Broken Puppet and I'll see you next time. Peace.